Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! So this is a bit of an old story of a situation that happened to me about 20 years ago. It still shocks me to this day. My recent post kind of reminded me of this. I thought I didn't have more than one entitled story. I guess I was wrong. This was a long time ago. I'm 32 now, I was 12 back then, so a lot of it is a bit fuzzy. The time of year was a day after Christmas, so December the 26th in 1999. Me, my mom, and my brother and sister were going after Christmas shopping because of all the really, really good deals on return goods. We've done this many times and it's sort of becoming somewhat of a tradition for our family since we never got everything we want on Christmas Day. So my brother was the youngest so he was latched at my mom's hand. My sister and I were playing hide and seek in a closed section which at this point in my life feels like it wasn't the best idea. My mom gave us a certain amount of money and sent us on our way to go and find the stuff we wanted. Mom told me and my sister to meet her in the electronics section of Big Blue when we were done. The Big Blue we went to was a super center, so the whole store was huge. I went straight for the electronics section because I was a bit of a gaming nerd and wanted to look and see if I could get a Sega Dreamcast cheaper than normal. My sister went to look at dolls and girls toys. Now the story is set up. So first I asked the person working at the counter could they get me the last Dreamcast they have behind the glass. The cashier tells me, sorry little man, you need your parents here to buy this. Like a godsend, my mom was right behind me with my sis and brother watching me making sure I was safe. My mom tells him, yes, that's me. Sorry, I told them to look for what they wanted. I figured my son would come here. He loves video games. It's okay with me if he gets the console. I was a hyperactive kid so I literally started jumping for joy as a guy pulled a Dreamcast out of the cabinet until the entitled kid snatches a box and runs back to his mom. Mommy, can I get a Dreamcast? Oh, sweetheart, you can have whatever you want. The cashier tells her, excuse me ma'am, I was pulling that box down for this little boy right here. He pointed to me while I was on the verge of tears. Mine! The kid screamed. My son deserves it a lot more than that little black boy. Excuse me, witch? Come again? My mom tells her. You heard me. You people don't even deserve to shop in this country. You don't belong here. My sister almost snapped and threw something at the entitled mother when my mom held her back. Let's go on, son. Okay, mommy. Mom says, listen here you big jerk, you're going to give my son that box back or I'm going to shove it so far up your butt, your racist and sisters will feel it. The Nakashir says, ma'am, I'm gonna ask you to leave the electronics department without a Dreamcast here. It's first come first serve and your boy snatched the system from my hands, so first put the box down and then leave. Not exactly what he said, but it was pretty close. Also, I think he could have gotten in trouble for this. My eyes lit up at my mom and she looked back at me with a symbol patting me on my head. My eyes lit up at my mom and she looked back at me with a smile patting me on my head. Ah, fine. But I'll be filing a complaint with corporate on how we were treated today. The entitled mother tells the entitled kid to put the box down and they go on their way. The cashier picked it up and handed it to me and me and my mom along with my pro and sis went on our way to the front checkout. Since there was overflow only checkout lines that were open was the front. We made our way up to the checkout lines gradually after looking around a bit. The next thing I know I feel something twist my foot in a way it wasn't meant to twist while standing in line. I screamed so loud. My mom whips around and checks on me. Oh, I'm sorry, the entitled mother says. Then she tells her son to grab the box that was lying next to me and then yelled in a really exaggerated tone. Help! Someone! 
At this point, I thought my mom went Super Saiyan or something. She got to her feet after checking on my now damaged ankle, walked over to the entitled mother and punched her so hard I heard an audible crack. How dare you run down my son with a cart? Someone call the cops to keep me from killing this lady. You freaking witch. She sent other racist stuff. How dare you? All you people need to be euthanized. Yeah, wrong thing to say in a big blue. Especially one that had predominantly black people shopping in it that day. The other cashier says, Ma'am, did you just attack a child? I don't have to stand for this. First I make a mistake, then I get attacked. You people are animals. I'm leaving. Ma'am, I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until the police show up. The cashier tells her. What do you mean, wait for the police? I did nothing wrong. Worried about his mom, the entitled kid had dropped the Dreamcast box and started crying. Look what you did. You made my son cry. I demand compensation for you, scaring my son. Yes, she said that. My mom picked up the box and put it in her cart until the police and an ambulance came to take a look at my ankle. The EMT came over to look at my ankle. The paramedic says, his ankle seems like it's only sprained. Then a police officer turned to my mom. Ma'am, she's going to jail for child abuse as well as child endangerment. Is there anything you would like to tell us that was left out? And my mom grinned. Well, I'm not sure if this is considered a hate crime, but she was openly racist toward me and my kids and called me a very racist term as well. Right. Thank you, ma'am. I write that down in my report. So, in the end, the entitled mom got jailed for child abuse, child endangerment, assault, battery, and resisting arrest. They had to tase her twice. After I left active duty service serving on board the ship, all I wanted to do was drive. So, in 1999, I got a driving job delivering meat in Southern California. It was a tough job dealing with traffic and my schedule was always tight with 16 to 20 deliveries each day to local markets. I was mostly given inner city routes with markets with limited space for mid-sized delivery trucks. One of my weekly stops was a small market owned and run by a Iraqi immigrant. I will call him Ali. Ali was always scheduled to be my fifth or sixth stop and would always complain to me why I would show up that late, after 9 a.m. each time. He said he wanted to be the first one of the day. I told him I knew he opened each day after 8 a.m. each weekday and that I start my route at about 6.15 a.m. Plus, I don't schedule my route. If he wanted to make sure he was the first delivery of the day, he would have to call Steve, our delivery route supervisor. Ali, in fact, called Steve because the very next week I received special instructions that read, make sure Ali's market is your first delivery of the day. I had my normal amount of stops that day, about 18, and I knew that all will be pushed back at least two hours because I knew Ali won't open until 8 a.m. and he will not open the rear door until an hour later. The rear door was for deliveries and trash pin access. I began driving at my usual time and I arrive at Ali's market 15 minutes later. Ali's market is closed. I had my orders and I will make sure Ali's market is the first one of the day. I park and I wait. 8 a.m. came and Ali showed up. He drove his old bins around the back of my truck and parks and walked inside through the back door. I waited for him to open the front and he ignores me. He was busy pretending to supervise the cashier, intentionally ignoring me. So I walked to the meat counter on the back. The guy tells me he was not allowed to take deliveries, that I had to wait for Mr. Ali. At this point, I could have gone to make two or three deliveries and then return. But I had my very specific order. As I was walking towards the front to exit the market, I grabbed the newspaper, paid for it and then told Ali who was just standing there looking at me. Let me know when you're ready to take your order. You know where I parked. Ali didn't say a word. He was apparently taking revenge for He was apparently taking revenge for all these years for his small city market, not being the first priority of a meat distributor 
who delivered beef, chicken, cheese and other refrigerated products from over 12 distribution points throughout the United States. Steve arrived at his desk right after 10 a.m. The first thing he saw on his computer screen was an alert of my truck sitting inert for 4 hours. He called me all in a rage, demanding I explain to him why my truck was sitting for all that time. I explained that I was following his order to make sure I delivered to Ali's market first. Steve hung up and called Ali. Whatever Steve told Ali made Ali to get his whiny butt out of his crappy little market and take delivery of his meat order. About 14 boxes of product, if I recall correctly. I then began to rush through the rest of my stops, not wasting time at all and at the end of my day, I was the last driver back to the warehouse. I got an extra $80 on overtime because Ali cried for not being the first delivery of the day. I never returned to see Ali again. Apparently, we dropped his whiny butt as a customer. This is my first post I ever made on here, and I have a few stories to tell if anyone is interested. But here it is. I used to work at a gas station. Me being only 20 at the time, I needed a job since I was new to my area after moving from one state to another. And the job was good. The manager, she was awesome. She was the sweetest thing before she left. And the manager after was just as awesome, before I moved to a new apartment. But not so much for the previous assistant manager when I started working there. Let's call him Richard, for obvious reasons. And let's call the first manager Angel, obviously not a real name. Richard was known to be very hostile, creepy when not around the manager, and made us try to do his load of the work and blamed us for being lazy when we couldn't do it in our jobs fast enough. My co-workers and I have brought the situation to the higher-ups numerous times, and as much as she wanted us to be heard, Angel couldn't do anything, and it came to a boiling point two months down the line on my end. Little fact about me, I'm timid, I'm autistic, and I'm very, very stressed when someone threatens me with my life. I get very, very sick to my core, a lack of breathing if I have to deal with that, and I use that to my advantage. On the shift I was supposed to be working that day, I had asked my friend Cross, not real name, if I could borrow his speaker to listen to my music. My manager said as long as I can do my job behind the register and Cross was okay with it, I can listen to my music. And I asked specifically if I can borrow it to take home for a couple days until my new speaker came in that I brought the previous paycheck. Cross said okay and shift change happened and Richard came in. He sees me listening to my music and he asks me to play his music from his phone on cross speaker. I said no, the speaker is mine for the next couple days and I don't want to be held responsible for any damage. He then whispers under his press for me to hear but for the cameras and a sword to not pick up. I have a knife you know and I basically in a single moment and quickly too came up with a way to end his nonsense. The revenge. I yelled at him loud enough so the cameras can pick it up, knowing that he would have to say something to defend himself. Why are you threatening me with a knife? And I kinda had a mixture of fear if he actually had one, and determination to make this man suffer for me in my co-workers' verbal abuse and sexual harassment for the past couple months. He backed away and said, hey hey hey, it's just a joke, chill out. And I knew I had to do something because at that point I said, A joke? Huh? Here is a good joke. Have fun working alone. I quit. I walked out, called my mother who I lived with nearby, explained the situation in tears after the adrenaline and fear finished its end, and I then was told then, called my manager to explain to her the situation. I then told her that I knew he had a knife on him because I saw a pocket knife in the office and it was a custom one with his name on it. Me and my mom after she picked me up and took me back to the store to talk with my manager, I wound up in a situation with the manager, the branch manager and the district manager asking about what happened. And I explained again, calmer now and in full. And they asked if I was okay. I told them no. I have a guy who has been sexually harassing my other co-workers 
verbally assaulting me and the others, try to threaten an autistic person who did nothing, except say no to using a speaker, get threatened with a knife. I don't feel safe with him around. They asked me about the speaker. I called Cross and he confirmed I asked to borrow the speaker overnight and backed me up with what the assistant manager has done in the past. And at that point, police were called. They checked the cameras and heard me yelling about the knife. And after a few months, I come to learn he got fired from his last job and arrested for them finding out he was in jail for threatening physical harm to a disabled person, sexual harassment, sexual assault, and unauthorized concealed weapon. He wanted a speaker. He got a speaker. A few speakers on a podium who put him in jail about a week after. Edit. Kind of forgotten to add that the police had saw the video of me mentioning the knife. So my school does a lot of fundraising, which is annoying considering what they are paid in tuition. As one of their fundraisers, they had us drag our grandparents into it. For a grade, we had to write a letter to our grandparents telling them how much we loved school and how great it would be if they could donate. Okay, way overstretching the boundaries here. First off, three out of four of my grandparents were dead at the time, and the other was completely insane with no idea how to handle money. Not gonna send a letter to her. However, it was mandatory to do this. I'm sure I could have written that I had no viable grandparents to write to, but I was pissed. So I look up the cemetery where my favorite grandmother is buried and wrote that address down. I also included a note that said love you, hope you're doing well over there, vague but true, turned it in and got a 100. I don't think they ever found out. My only regret is that now, that poor cemetery gets a newsletter from my school every single month. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.